Big market sell-off yesterday. What does that mean for the markets? That's coming up on 3 Minutes on Markets & Money. Over the last four days, we've been talking about this rally in the markets. Markets had climbed above the 50-day, the 100-day moving average, got above the 20-day. Things were looking really bullish. Then yesterday, a hotter-than-expected inflation print comes out and sends the markets into turmoil, according to CNBC this morning, all day. CNBC, markets in turmoil. Um, yesterday, markets were down 4% on the S&P 500. That is the largest one-day drop since June of 2020. Yep, you've got to go all the way back to the pandemic shutdown to get a 4% drop in the markets in one day. Now, that seems terrible on the surface, right? When we talk about that, a 4% decline one day, that was really painful, absolutely. Uh, importantly, though, markets did wind up holding this uptrend line that we've been building now for the last you know, couple of months. And again, that bullish uptrend line is continuing to hold. Now that's gonna be tested this morning and that's gonna be a key level that markets need to hold here by, the, by Friday's close. So we need to stay above this bullish kind of rising bull trend line. And of course, also we need to stay above these levels of support kind of going back to these bottoms. So again, we have a couple of very important levels that are coinciding right now with the markets that markets need to hang on to if we're gonna kind of keep this bullish trend working. Now, we talked about the MACD buy signal yesterday. We were very close yesterday morning. We talked about if the markets were up for the day that you know we would trigger that buy signal. Well, obviously that didn't occur. That buy signal was not triggered yesterday. That keeps pressure downward on the markets for right now. Futures are pointing a little bit lower this morning. So we're gonna have an immediate test of both this horizontal support line as well as this rising bullish trend line. So again, there's a, there is some good support here. We'll see what happens with markets today. But again, something well worth paying attention to. And again, another reason why we continue to hold a little bit more cash as this market remains volatile to say the least. One interesting thing about yesterday was that despite the fact that we had this very sharp sell-off in the markets, volatility remains very muted. In fact, if we look at a longer term picture of volatility, it really hasn't done much. Now you would expect that if you're looking at a market going in, in terms of, of volatility and talking about a long term picture here, and we start talking about volatility going back to previous bear markets, you know, we can see here's the, the spike in 2020 during the March shutdown. Um, go back to the, the bear market in 2008, right? We have a, a volatility spike going all the way up to 80 in volatility. There is no volatility despite the bear market this year and despite yesterday's 4% sell-off. You know, volatility really hasn't gone anywhere. There's not really a sign of, of panic or fear in the markets. Markets remain very constrained here. And importantly, you know, when talking about this, we're not seeing a lot of outflows out of equities either. So when you take a look at positioning, uh, ETF flows, et cetera, we're not seeing a big outflow of, of money coming out of the markets. In fact, for the most part, money stays kind of very well seated within the overall markets. Inflows have been kind of steady this year. And again, not a lot of panic despite the big underperformance in both 60-40 models as well as all equity models, despite the decline in, in both those structures, the fact that bonds and stocks are going down simultaneously, not a lot of panic or fear in the market. So again, not a big catalyst here at this point to panic and start taking a lot of capital out of markets. But there's certainly some concerns coming up. The Fed is going to be hiking by 75 basis points next week. There's a rising probability of a 1% increase. And of course, the big question and the thing that may show up in the volatility eventually is whether or not the Fed breaks something. Do they go too far hiking rates and break something economically and particularly in the credit markets? That's the one thing we're going to be paying close attention to because that will change the dynamic of this complacent market into a very uncomplacent one. I'm your host Lance Roberts for three minutes on markets and money. See you back here tomorrow.